Something rather unusual in Kenyan terms took place in Hungary, a small European country close to seven times smaller than Kenya with a population of roughly 9.6 million. So here is what happened. The president of that country, Ms. Katalin Novak, resigned not more than a week ago. I know, right? A whole president resigned, meaning she left office, left power, the motorcades and all. Here is what led to that unusual happening. You see, it turns out that last year in April, she, as president, pardoned a person convicted of covering up the sexual abuse of children. The man was part of 25 pardoned by the president and signed off by the country's justice minister. Now, news of this only came to light following the publication of a story by a local media house just this year. Now, this led to widespread uproar, both by the opposition and the public. You see, the decision to pardon was ironic. This is because Ms. Novak and her party are largely conservative, with strong family values, campaigning on the platform of protecting children from abuse and indoctrination by what they call anti-family values. Now, she wasn't the only one to resign. The Justice Minister, Judith Varga, who signed off the clemency, also resigned. And the ramifications went further. The Justice Minister's ex-husband, who enjoyed close ties to those in government, also resigned from positions he held in state-owned companies, saying, and I quote, I do not for one minute want to be part of a system in which the real people responsible hide behind women's skirts, end quote. Now, you see, even with the protests, the resignation was termed unexpected. This is because the position of the party and the 14-year grip they have had on power, and also considering an upcoming EU parliamentary election in which the justice minister herself was to play an important part. It has had some serious political ramifications for the prime minister of that country, even though the presidency is largely ceremonial. But for me, it is what she said in her six-minute resignation speech that is worth remembering and the lessons that can be drawn from that. So here are a few excerpts. She said, and I quote, I adopted a clemency decision which has left many people confused and unsettled. They understandably want an explanation, end quote. So here you see her taking ownership of the decision and the understanding that people deserve an explanation. Of course, she goes on to give her reasons for the pardon, saying it was based on the information she had at the time that led her to believe that the convict had not in fact taken advantage of the vulnerability of children. But it is what she says next that is profound. I made a mistake, she says. A leader taking responsibility. And she goes on to explain that the decision raised doubts about a much-touted policy of the party and the administration on zero tolerance on child sexual abuse. She then went on to reiterate this position, assuring the country of their commitment to protecting children. Then she said, as a Hungarian, I would expect the president of Hungary not to make mistakes. If they did, I would expect them to face those to whom they are accountable and take responsibility. You see, this clearly shows she has standards as a citizen and is expecting and asking the populace to hold her to the same standard. She understands why people would ask questions, require answers. She also understands the role the mandate and the responsibility of the office she holds, and she asks the citizens to hold her to the standards of that high office. Then she says this, I apologize to those whom I offended. So not only does she own up to her mistake, not only does she take responsibility for her decision, she makes an apology, an unequivocal one, Note, it's not a conditional apology. She doesn't apologize if she offended people. 
She goes further to apologize to, quote, victims who might have felt that I failed to stand up for them. And then she resigned. And she explains why. She said that she does not believe she can perform her duties as president while remaining faithful to the oath she took. In other words, she admits to breaking the oath of office. She then reaches out to her political base, assures them and has some lessons to the young people about holding fast to their values, about perseverance, and most importantly, about taking responsibility for their mistakes and not putting self above country. Now, as she ends her resignation speech, she now focuses on the life ahead of her, her family, and other parts of her life that she will now focus on, indicating that there is life after public service. Now, imagine if that were to happen here in Kenya, with elected leaders indicted in the eyes of the public of betraying their oath of office, implicated in mega corruption scandals. Have they resigned? Well, let me take you down memory lane. You remember terms like, I will not resign. Who is my accuser? Remember another one like, I would rather die than resign. There was yet another who said resigning would be tantamount to political suicide. All these statements are followed by tribal groupings being shipped in from the village to protect their kinsmen. I wonder where the Hungarian president's tribe was, because they should have been there to do the Kenyan thing, which is protect the pardoned or the convicted, withdraw the charges. In fact, go ahead, cite coercion by some other faction, and then once they're off the hook, proceed to appoint them to a plum government position. You see, what we have in Kenya is a political takeover of the justice system in Kenya. It's very easy to predict, for example, which way a case will go. In fact, it is even much easier to know whether prosecution will even happen at all. So every case that doesn't involve a small fish, a fish that is small enough, basically collapses. Here are my overall lessons from Hungary. Governments and elected leaders actually can and should listen to their citizens and respond when they are unhappy. Leaders can and should own up to mistakes, take responsibility for their actions. And finally, resigning is not the end of the world. And there is life after public service. That's my take tonight.